Today we're going to be talking about projectile motion. I'm really excited about it. And what is projectile motion? It's a form of motion in which an object or particle called a projectile is thrown near the surface and it moves along a curved path under the action of gravity, the only force of significance that acts on the object which acts downward to cause a downward acceleration. There are no horizontal forces needed to maintain the horizontal motion consistent with the concept of inertia. So this is a parabolic water trajectory. This is a water, a little kind of like a water fountain. It's going up and it's going down. Notice it's going up and down. We're going to be using a quadratic equation to model this and because it has a maximum our a in that equation is going to be negative. There is a formula that we're going to be using and this is the formula that we're given. It's h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus vt plus h. Now Ours has an S, as an S is the initial starting height. Theirs use an H. We're just going to be flexible and understand that different um, books have um, the same formula, just a little bit different letters that they use for their variables, okay? So what we're going to do today is we're going to solve this problem that's in the, in, in, on the internet, and then we're going to do two problems from our lessons using GeoGebra, okay? So this is the equation of motion that we're going to be using. Here's our problem. A ball is thrown straight up from the top of, of a 128 foot building with an initial speed of 32 feet per second. The height of the building O oh, as a function of time can be modeled by this function. How long will it take for the ball to hit the ground? Let me show you how to do that. So I took the equation, I took the time to get some stuff here. H of t, this is the formula. Remember, we're using s instead of initial height is s. Okay, so we'll put an s there. All right, so we have an uh, initial height of our building is s is 128 feet. The initial speed is v is 32. How long will it take it to, to reach the ground? So I'm going to draw an x, y axis. So our um, ball is going to start at 128 feet and go down here, okay? So let's show you how to use this formula. What I do in order to use the technology, we're going to change it from y's to x's. So we're going to say y is equal to negative 16 x squared, y's and x's instead of t's, okay? Um, y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus vx plus s. So let's plug that in y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus instead of v we're going to put in 32 plus our initial height of 128 feet. So what we're looking for is this right here. Now if we were going to solve this not using technology we would set this equal to zero because when the height is zero we're going to find the intercepts and I would use the quadratic formula a is negative 16, b is 32, c is 128. Plug it into the formula to find the intercepts. And notice you'll get, because this is this is a parabola, there's going to be a negative answer that you would just disregard. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in GeoGebra. Okay, I opened up my GeoGebra and I'm just going to put in the equation right here. So y is equal to negative 16x squared plus 32x plus 128. And now I'm going to bring this down here. And what I'm going to do is move the graphics view. Let me bring this down a little bit so it's inside of the, the screen here. Move the graphics view and collapse this. And I'm going to label what we have here. This is actually seconds. So this, our time, is in seconds. And over here, our height is in feet. So now we have a little bit more of an understanding of how this equation works. Now, the time it takes to go up and down, all you do is just use the point tool, intersect right here, so it takes four seconds. Notice if you use the quadratic equation, you would get two results. This is disregarded because you can't have negative two seconds. But what's really happening is our ball is being released at 128 feet. It's going up and it's coming down. This is a model. It's not exact. It's just using the force of gravity. Now let's try another problem. I'm going to pause. I'll be right back. We'll do two problems from our lessons, actually. Okay, now Gordon hits a golf ball upward from the ground with an initial seat speed, speed of 98 feet per second. What is the approximate maximum height of the golf ball will go round to the nearest hundredth throughout your calculations? So let me show you how to do that. So let's draw a picture because I always start with a picture. Okay, it says he's moving it from the ground. 
So our s, our initial height, is 0. And then, so it's going up and it's going down. And it's the v, initial height, is 98 feet per second. They want the maximum height here. So let's plug this into our equation. y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus vx plus s. So y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus our initial velocity which is 98 x and our initial height is 0. So I'm just going to make this a better 9 because it just drives me crazy. I'll try my best. There we go. So now we're going to plug this into GeoGebra and we're going to find the maximum height. So let me show you how to do that. Bring back our GeoGebra. File new. Don't save. I'm just going to bring this up so I can see my equation. So y is equal to um, negative 16 x squared with my mouse plus 98x. Enter. Now I'll make this big. And I always move my graphics view so I can see what I'm doing here. So this, this golf ball is going way high in the sky. It's going up to like 150 feet. So go here and we're going to go down here and click down. So it's, they have our rounding tool. There's actually a rounding. It's two decimal places. So this was already done for us, built into the computer to the nearest hundredth. So the answer would be, um, no, this isn't the answer. It would take 6.13 seconds. I forgot they're asking what the maximum height is. So let me show you how to do that. There's different ways of doing this on GeoGebra. So I just clicked here and clicked here. Um, this is one way of doing it. So I'm going to take the midpoint between here and here. What that does is this is an, this parabola is even on both sides and the midpoint is equal to negative b over 2a from our formula where a, b, and c are the following. a is negative 16, b is 98, and c is 0. Okay? And so what we're going to do is this, the midpoint is 3.06. So we write down x equals 3.06 and where this intersects, there is an intersection tool actually and is the maximum height. So 150.06 feet is your answer for this. I'm going to pause and get another problem. Okay, now we're talking about a firecracker. It shoots up from a hill that's 128 feet high with an initial speed of 112 feet per second. How long will it take for the shell of the firecracker to hit the ground? So, as always, I always draw a picture so I can see what's happening. Well, it's starting with a height, S is equal to 128. So it's starting above the ground. So it's going to start here and it's going to go up and it's going to go down. So they're asking how long, so they just want this time right here. So we write down our equation. y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus vx plus s. Our initial height, s is 128. Our initial speed is equal to 112 feet per second. So we're going to plug this in right here. y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus our initial height which is 112 x plus our initial height, wait, our initial speed of 112 plus our initial height of 128 feet. So let's go to GeoGebra and let's plug this in. So I'm going to hit File, New, don't save. I'm going to bring this up so I can see the equation so I don't make any mer errors. So I'm going to write it down, y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus 112 x plus 128. And let's go over here and move our graphics view. And remember, this is time in seconds. And so the number of seconds it's going to take is, for our firecracker, is 8 seconds. They didn't ask you what the maximum height was, but let's just do that anyways. And we're going to do the midpoint. 3.5. X equals 3.5. And then intersect. And it's going to be high, 324 feet. Okay, I hope this, this video helps you um, with your lessons, and I hope you enjoy using GeoGebra to solve these problems. Thank you so much for watching.